Hello guys and welcome back to 737 DIY Sim. Gonna take a step away again from the 737 and try something that I've really been meaning to do for several years now. And that is to prototype the helicopter cyclic stick. Now we're all fully aware that Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is bringing out helicopters soon, but Prepath 3D and X-Plane have already got them. So I want a really good feeling cyclic stick. Now if you don't know, I am actually a helicopter engineer and have been for quite a while. So I've got a good idea of how it should feel, what it should do, and uh, I've even downloaded some specs of the sort of forces that we should expect to feel. I've got a good idea of up in my head here of how to do it. Let's see how it goes. Now in front of me here is iteration one, and this time rather than build a start to finish in one 40 minute video, I thought we'd go through step by step. Now, I can already tell you this is version one and this is nowhere near complete. Uh, if I just pick up, here's the cyclic grip, the cyclic grip, and uh, I got this off Thingiverse, this is not my design, this is probably, it looks quite good, um, it feels quite good. The problem is, it's actually a little bit small for my hands, I'll correct that. If your hand's a bit smaller, it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, another floor I've got, uh, two more floors I've already noticed, is this is the uh, angle support for the cyclic grip that goes on here. There's no hole for the cables, so need to correct that. And that's the same for the cyclic base here. And this time, which should please most of you, is that I'm using standard PVC pipe. Uh, this is from Amazon, so if I can get it in the UK, that means 90% of you should be able to get it in the rest of the world. Unlike Brunei, where I picked a size that nobody else could get hold of. So let's start with the cyclic tube, and we've got our angle piece in here, and that, as you can see, just pushes straight in. A cyclic grip goes on the end like so, and now we've just got that rough ice, that rough shape that we can work from. Put that to one side. Now we've got the base, and the base I've tried to keep as compact as possible. It does need to be mounted to the floor, so there are screw holes in here, so it's going to be mounted to a baseboard, uh, and I've tried to keep it low. When we get it built a little bit further, Normally on a proper helicopter cyclic you have control rods coming off and you'd have the two systems, the pitch normally coming off longitudinally and the lateral being the roll. This time I'm not going to be able to do that because otherwise it's going to be really big and I don't want that for a home user type joystick let's say, a home cyclic, I want it to be compact. So we're trying to fit all the mechanics into one little area and it's this size here. So we'll bring our side frame in, and that just needs a bearing. It fits in like so. Now I do believe that that, ah, it's gonna go like that. Just gonna push that to one side while we bring in the stepper motor. And the stepper motor mount. I'm going to cheat, I'm only going to put two screws in because this is only prototyping. There we go. So we've got our partially assembled stepper motor and that is hopefully going to fit into the adjustment area. There we go. With the stepper motor in position, we've got our cap and this will set the mesh in depth of the gears. And here we've got the other side. In goes the bearing, nice push fit. The stepper motor, hopefully that's just gonna slide, goes that way round. Then we've got our cap, which should go on something like that. Before we can put this side unit on, we need to build the roll channel force fill unit, and that's this unit here. Let's push these to one side, bring this in. Um, we've got our tongs here. Hopefully the bearings will just push in. 
and then they go onto the unit as well. Flip that one over. With our tongues fitted, we've got the centre bearing. Oh wow, that's tight. So then I'm hoping this is going to fit onto this shaft. That will go on there like so. Ah, it does go on a bit further. Put our bearing on. That's our bear and retainer screw. Now we get to put our side on. Like so. Let's turn that over and get some 8mm screws in there. We've got our bolt. I'm hoping that's going to go through, and it is. That's what these caps are for. They're going to go over and hold it all together. So the shaft that I've just inserted is basically an adapter shaft. It doesn't take any load because there's an eight millimeter bolt that goes through there. And all it's doing is taking the eight millimeter diameter and upgrading it to a 17 millimeter. It will be the rod that takes the load of the cyclic. This is our pitch force gradient unit and that's going to slide on to the shaft there. So I've put the unit on its side to put this spur gear on the stepper motor. Get my little tappy tappy. So hopefully we can get this next spur gear onto the, this is the pitch channel. Give it a bit of a tappy tappy. There it goes. How's the engagement feel? It feels quite good. So we'll just tighten this screw up to hold it against the gear. Yeah, that's good. Then we've got this bolt here that's going to go right through the centre and support the whole assembly. It's a little bit too long right now, but we can sort that out in a later version. There we go. Now, because I don't have the correct size nuts, I'm just going to use two bearings. It'll do for the time being. There we go. And do you know what? I'm actually going to go three. So next up is to wire the stepper motors. And we're going to use the stepper motors initially as mag brakes, like in the real aircraft. So they will hold the controls in a fixed position, like the parallel actuators. And when they're fixed, the controls will move about the force feel units or force gradient units we'd call them in the real aircraft and that's what these spring and tongue assemblies are here and as you can see if I hold the base of it the cyclic stick moves back with them de-energized they should move to the position where you press the force trim switch they now re-energize when you let go and it holds the cyclic stick in that position now I've over exaggerated this We've, you'd never have this in real flight, but now the cyclic stick's got a new centered position and it acts about that when the pilot moves the controls. Normally though, it's only gonna be a couple of degrees. Let's hook some power up. I've got mobile flight loaded up on the computer. I've got the two stepper drivers into the uh, Arduino Mega. It is still floppy right now. So first thing I'm gonna do is plug the power into the 24 volt power supply. There she goes. And now automatically this should have locked up and it has. So this would be like force trim on. And 
how does that feel? A bit light. So we could do with some more springs. One second. And this will be the real test. Okay, so I've got dual springs now on the pitch. Oh, that is much better. That's got some really good force. And it needs to be between about 700 grams to a kilo at the top of the stick. And we're not far off. You can tell that that's not right. So, let's put another one on here. So at two amps as well, that's proven, hopefully. Yep. At two amps, which is only half the load of these stepper drivers, they can hold the loads involved. So I don't need to redesign the base and the gear ratios, which is fantastic news. And that is amazing. That is truly amazing. How that just feels. I can't believe it's worked that well. That's put a big smile on my face. So that replicates the aircraft flying, force trim on and hydraulics on. And it's good. It always goes back to where the pilot left the stick. And we're back. Okay guys, in all honesty, a little time has passed since you just saw that last segment of the film. And that's because the sim and the workshop all fully arrived. And now we can get back to the cyclic. I've actually got a real hat switch here from a Bell 212. I'm gonna quickly wire that up. So that means we can test the beep. And that would sit on the top of the cyclic here. Back in a sec. Now that the top hat switch is wired, it's only got the Arduino cables attached to it, the cheap jumper ones. We'll bring the cyclic back in, put that to the side, and I'll show you this abomination of wiring that I've been doing while prototyping. It's two stepper drivers. Over here, we've got our 24 volt power supply. This micro switch is the trim release, and that should go up here on the cyclic. And then obviously our hat, a hat switch which is our beep trim should go right in the middle and all I'm going to do is plug this into the Arduino so black goes into ground and then I think we'll use let me just get this right so it needs to be purple grey together and then blue and white purple grey blue and white that just means they're opposites So that's them, five. And then we've got our hat switch and beep trim. So as it stands, this would be like if you're in the helicopter and the engines weren't running and the hydraulics and the power is off. And it should just be very floppy, which it is. Of course, when the engines come online and the hydraulics come online, power gets applied. And we simulate that by plugging the 24 volt power supply in. Instantly the controls jump and now they should be centered and locked. It's putting a smile on my face because yes, I've been playing and I know it works. <clears throat> so that is our neutral centered position. I'm now gonna press the trim release button, which is this micro switch here. The power supply has gone silent, which is already a good sign. And now we can move this cyclic in any position we want without any force feel. So it's nice and easy to hover. And uh, the guys in the military, they do this all the time in Brunei. So generally, if you're flying along and you want to increase speed, you'd press the force trim in like I am now. You'd move it slightly forward until you're happy with the speed and then you'd let go again. And the aircraft will maintain that attitude. And you can still move the controls, but they're around the new centered point. Trim again, he brings it back. And now you can either hover or set it back to neutral and operate around that point. So force field is fully working. And because we're using stepper motors as, uh, as uh, mag brakes, the ingenious thing about this is they can also act as parallel actuators. And I've got the beep trim here. Hopefully mobile flight is running to my right. And if I push forward, you can see, hopefully, we can now control 
the cyclic with beep trim. There we go, is that zero? It is zero. And it's the same for left and right. I mean, how cool is this? I've been thinking about this for a couple of years now. And even though we've got it beeped right, we should still be able to move the controls in any position we want, but we've got that force trim feel. And even in that position, we can quickly push the force trim in, which will be this switch here, and we can move it to any place we want, re-engage it, and just continuing trimming as we require. That is pretty cool. Guys, that's it for this episode. That is prototyping 101. Next up, I've got 102. Uh, obviously gonna make these tubes hollow. I'm gonna try and get some switches fitted into the cyclic grip so it starts working as it is. I wanna get some stops fitted because at the moment, you can take these controls too far and that's useless. And of course, the stepper motors aren't engaged and even though they are engaged now, they're not engaged on the unit. There we go. Until next time guys, catch you later, sim out.